to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams is now live on Infowars.com. Watching Counter Think. Welcome to this episode. I'm Mike Adams, your host here on Infowars.com. This is also being posted at Counterthink.com. You can check out all the episodes there. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a really fantastic show for you lined up all about bio sludge and bio solids. We're interviewing a, an amazing scientist slash whistleblower. His name is Dr. David Lewis. And he's the author of the book Science for Sale. He's being considered as the science advisor to President Trump. And he is the person who opened my eyes to the issue of biosludge and biosolids. Now, this affects you in a big way because you're eating food that's been grown in human, you know, city sewage, human waste. It's, it's shipped out of the cities and it's spread on the countryside and on the farms. And... What this stuff contains will absolutely blow your mind. You will definitely want to hear this entire episode. And Dr. David Lewis joins us uh, a couple segments down the road here. I've got an, a lot of other interesting points to cover first. But let me define biosludge for you. You know, there's a story about uh, thousands of tons of, of New York human sewage stuck on a train in Alabama. And this story was the first story for a lot of people that woke them up to this issue of biosludge and, and sewage. And why is this happening? Well, it turns out that cities, of course, produce thousands of tons of, of waste. I mean, when you flush the toilet, when the, the corporations flush and the, the hospitals flush, their medical, sometimes medical waste, uh, sometimes even biohazards go down the drain. You know, light industrial companies, uh, heavy metals, lots of things go down the drain. And that's all collected into a giant, uh, like a sludge farm, <laughs> like, a, like a sludge collection point. And then the water is separated out from the solids so that it becomes, well, semi-aqueous, but not a lot of water. And then these solids are said to be safe by the EPA. But they say so based on fraudulent science, and that's what we're going to get into today. Nevertheless, they take this bio sludge and they load it onto trucks and trains, and they distribute it across America. And they distribute it usually locally. They, they take a truck, they load it up with this human sewage and sludge and toxic waste, and they drive it out, out of the city, and they dump it in a on a farm field. They, they go to farmers' doors and they knock on their doors and they say, hey, would you like some free fertilizer? And the farmers are like, yeah, we'll take free fertilizer. It's fertilizer. And, and the city says, yeah, it's fertilizer. It's got nitrogen in it. That, that must make it fertilizer. It's kind of like from Idiocracy. It's got electrolytes. You know, it's got nitrogen in it. It's a fertilizer. And the farmer's like, yeah, we'll take some. They don't tell them uh, it's also got heavy metals, it's got uh, E. coli, it's got uh, antibiotic-resistant superbugs, you know, it's got hormone disruptors, plasticizer chemicals, pharmaceuticals, recreational drugs, plasticizers. Uh, did I mention that already? Uh, uh, all kinds of stuff in it. And it's insanely toxic. And they don't tell the farmers that. And so the farmers are like, oh, we're getting free fertilizer. And then all the sewage gets dumped on their farms. And from there, mass death ensues. You know, death of the of the field, death of the forest. Uh, they can grow crops in it, but the microbes in the soil are killed because of all the toxins. And then the birds spread it around, and the wind spreads it around, and it becomes almost like a biological weapon. Hmm. And then farms. We have documented cases for our upcoming film, Bio Sludge. We've documented farms that have been utterly economically destroyed because of this bio sludge that's spread on them. And farmers being almost unable to sell those farms because of the damage and the smell, the horrid, putrid smell. Imagine taking all the raw sewage of a city like Houston or New York City or Seattle or Los Angeles and just dumping it outside your front door. That's what they're doing to farmers. It's the cities dumping on rural areas and dumping on farmers, and we're going to get to the bottom of it right here on Counterthink. So stay with us. We'll come back after this break, and I'll give you a little more information, and we'll talk to Dr. David Lewis. Stay with us. My name is Mike Adams, your host, and, uh, you know, Alex asked me to, to do this show or invited me to do it, and I said, yeah, heck yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Let's do the show. And I asked Alex, you know, what, 
what do you want me to cover? And his answer was, anything you want. You just cover anything you want. You just do it. And so I've done a lot of research on biosludge, and that's our topic today. And uh, coming up in about 10 minutes, we're going to be talking to Dr. David Lewis. He's a former EPA whistleblower and scientist who has written a book called Science for Sale. But before we get to that, uh, oh, get ready. You're going to be... I'm, I'm going to try not to gross you out in this segment, but I'm going to bring you some actual real real news about what's what's happening here, okay? What goes into biosludge? Now, you know that it's human waste. That's, that's now common knowledge. You know that it's everything that's flushed down the drain. It's hospital waste. It's industrial waste, pharmaceuticals, recreational drugs, you know, light light industry, whatever they flush down the drains. It's like people's used, you know, car oil and everything else that goes down the drain. But what if I told you that the dissolved sludge of dead people was also found in the city waste of some cities? That brings me to this story out of Canada. It says a Smith Falls company that dissolves the dead has license suspended. We covered this on Natural News. I even mentioned it on a previous InfoWars show. But there's a company that has figured out a way to turn dead humans into liquid. And then they dump this liquid into the city sewer system. And it becomes the biosolids that the cities then spread on food crops. So you're literally, it's like a scene out of the Matrix, right? You're literally liquefying the dead and feeding it back to babies and adults through the food supply because that's what the crops are grown in. You know, it's called fertilizer because it has nitrogen in it, but it's also got in some cases, the dead, liquefied remains of your relatives. And we, we called, you know, we called this out. We talked about this. And still to this day, almost nobody believes this is happening. But that's not even the worst part of it. Can you guys imagine if you sit here and listen to this, what this Mike Adams, and he's not just talking something that are theoretical or what they call the conspiracy theories, this this dude does his research and he has his evidence and information to back up what he's saying. He's not just talking out of his head. He's a scientist, have his own lab. He has proof. You can contact him, go to his website, mikeadams.com or naturalnews.com. Get in contact with him. But can you imagine the grossness, the cannibalism? Can you imagine the things that that is in the, in the soil and then they grow our food with that soil? And then we're eating the food. From a spiritual point of view, how demonic is that? It's a form of cannibalism. That means even they abort their babies. So now there's a company that knows how to take the dead bodies and, and liquefy them. Why can't you just burn them? Like most people, if, if you don't, if the family don't want to claim the dead bodies, most most companies usually just burn them and throw the ashes away. Now you find a way to liquefy the dead bodies. And then you put the water and you sell it to the farmers in the form of a fertilizer. And they have no clue. And they think it's an actual fertilizer. And then they, they fertilize the soil and we eat the food. No matter, no wonder the nation is so demonized. And people have so many sicknesses and disease that medical science don't even have names for it. Nor do they have cure for it. So these people are creating some of the diseases mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically. They are creating some of the diseases. And then we have to go to the same company who created the diseases to give us medication to cure the very diseases they created by their wickedness and the diabetical act. It is really time for a serious shakedown and an awakening and an uprising of the citizens of this nation to begin to make a demand on Congress to change some of the laws. It's time for the church to gather up and begin to organize a spiritual protest and pray that God will begin to dethrone these principalities in the FDA, in the big pharmaceutical industry, the Food and Drug Administration, the, the, the food products. The cosmetics products, your lotion, I mean, anything you touch, they have put it, they have poisoned it with the tentacles and the evil plants. It's time for us to pray, church, that God will dethrone these guys or take them out. Seriously, remove them, change their mind, let them turn or, or let them be removed. That's the only choice they have. Abortion centers. Now, I'm not even going to 
ask Dr. David Lewis about abortion because I'm, I'm not trying to make this a, a, a political interview with him. He's a scientist. I want to ask him about the science of biosolids. But in this segment, before we get to Dr. Lewis, what I'm telling you is that abortion centers, we now know, across America are, how to put this nicely, they're taking the dead fetal tissue and they're putting it down garbage disposals that drain right into the city sewer systems. Not all of them are doing it that way, but some are. And this has come out through videos and, and articles from, the, I believe it's the Center for Medical Progress talks about that. And what it means, and we've covered this in Natural News, in this article, new recycling technology is actually cannibalism. Uh, dead people are liquefied, drained into city sewers. And if you look at the, if you search on my websites for abortions, uh, abortion industry and biosolids, you'll find how the abortion industry is putting the fetal tissue down the drain. What it means is that you are you are fertilizing crops with aborted human fetal tissue, and in some cases, due to biocremation, the dead remains of actual adult humans. You know, like uh, family members who died. You know, they're 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 being liquefied and put into the sewer system. The thing is, somebody might argue, oh, well, it's green, it's recycling. They used to just bury, you know, Aunt May out in the back 40. And, you know, it was natural, just bury people in the ground. That's what they would say. But today, it's not just a natural burial. It's not like the Native American Indians would just bury people in the ground. It's not being done that way. It's being done with chemicals. And it's being done covertly so that you don't know this is happening. No one from these these industries goes public and says, oh, yeah, we're liquefying, you know, uh, abort babies and we're flushing them down into the municipal water system you know, or sewage system. And uh, they're turning into biosolids that we're putting on your crops. No one tells you that. No one tells you that story, even though it's true. No one tells you, oh, biocremation, we're going to have a whole new system where we liquefy your dead relatives and dump them down the drain so they become part of the biosolids so you can spread you know your <laughs> you know granny you know uh through 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 the the sewage supply on your peach orchard in northern oregon let's say or southern washington no one's telling you that and that's my point this is all being hidden from you it's it's covert it is insidious there are many ethical questions there are health questions there are epidemiological questions what about the spreading of disease? You know, what about if you're taking this, this biomedical waste and flushing it down the drain and it happens? You think hospitals uh, properly dispose of everything? No, they don't. Especially, you know, the, the local low-budget clinics. You, a lot of that stuff just, just goes down the drain. And it ends up on farms. And it ends up intermingled with the food supply. And then the food supply ends up being fed to your children. You know, you got to ask questions like mm -hmm. E. coli. How did E. coli contaminate romaine lettuce? Mm -hmm. There was a, a big safety recall issue. The FDA was part of it that Rom romaine lettuce was sickening people across America because of E. coli. Well, guess what? E. coli only comes from animals and humans. E. coli doesn't just appear magically out of the thin air. Does it? E. coli doesn't just grow on romaine lettuce. It comes from humans or animals. So for E. coli to get into the vegetables, it has to come from somewhere. What if it's coming from the biosludge, the, the sewage system? They're concentrating all these toxins and then spreading them on food production crops, which could include orchards. It could include corn. I mean, imagine you're growing genetically modified corn on a human feces biosludge, quote, fertilizer with ground up dead babies and dead humans. On, on the crops and you're eating GMO corn and you're told everything's fine, everything's safe, don't worry, don't ask any questions, uh, keep buying your GMO corn because it's, you know, it's only 59 cents a pound or whatever it happens to be. You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that we are fighting against here. You need to think about where your food comes from. You need to think about where the fertilizer comes from. You need to think about where things go when you flush them down the drain. Where does that end up? And every city in America is a generator of a massive pile of human feces and waste and pollution that's then just just spread all over America. And it's the cities polluting the rural areas. 
It's the northern cities polluting the southern cities in some cases, like we saw with this New York train being stuck in Alabama full of New York poo and sewage. What, what, what is New York sewage doing in uh, Parrish, Alabama? You know, ask that question. Why is there a train load of feces stuck in Alabama? Because our system is broken. There's so much feces and waste being produced by these cities, they don't know what to do with it. Huh. They need to be incinerating it and turning it into ash, by the way, and that way you destroy the chemicals, you destroy the pharmaceuticals, you destroy the plasticizers, the hormone disruptors, the microbes. You need to incinerate it, and it becomes a very tiny mass. You know, you uh, 100 tons of, of feces, of, of bile sludge, might become only, let's say, one ton of ash by the time you incinerate it. That's what you need to be doing, but the cities don't want to do that because it costs too much money. So they just take it and dump it on the farmers' fields and dump it in the front yards of, of farmers who, frankly, are not informed on this issue. They think they're getting free fertilizer. Huh. This is the issue that we're talking about here. And, you know, we're, we're going to interview Dr. David Lewis in the next segment. He'll be joining us. And uh, he's going to give us the lowdown on the fraudulent science behind all of this. And I'm going to ask him some tough questions. Uh, is... You know, <laughs> is the EPA engaged in, in s systemic fraud? Uh, is the EPA faking the science on this? Why is the EPA legalizing the mass pollution of America with human feces and human waste? What's the solution? If cities produce waste, what are we supposed to do with it all? How do we stop this mass poisoning of America's soils and America's croplands and farmlands with biosludge? These are the questions that I'm going to ask. And that's my job here on Counter Thing. That's why I do this show. And that's why I appreciate you supporting this show and sharing this show. So when we come back, you know, we'll get into that. We all need answers. This is a real issue affecting your health and my health and the health of our children, the health of our communities, and could even be contributing to the rise of antibiotic resistant superbugs. So stay with us. We'll talk to Dr. David Lewis next as we continue this episode of Counterthink here on Inc. Welcome to this segment. We're interviewing Dr. David Lewis, author of Science for Sale, and he's also a key contributor to FocusForHealth.org, which is a just an amazing website that talks about independent science and uh, he joins us by skype for this entire segment i've got a lot of questions for him i can't wait to talk to him uh dr david lewis welcome to counter think it's great to have you on thanks mike i'm so happy to be here well it's, it's great to have you joining and I, I really appreciate you making the time for this you're a busy guy i understand uh, you are being considered as the science advisor to president trump i certainly hope that that you actually get offered that position. Is that something you're prepared to do? Uh, I would be very interested in that uh, job, certainly. Uh, I did hear from the uh, executive committee of the Trump transition to see whether I would accept that position if offered. Well, I certainly hope they, they get that uh, serious and due consideration. You have an extraordinary background in science. Let me brief our, our viewers on just a little bit of that, and I'll ask you to fill in the blanks if I leave something out. You are a former EPA scientist. You, uh, Some people call you a whistleblower. You're, you are very, very familiar with analytical science and environmental science, and you are very familiar with the EPA's decision to legalize the pollution of soils through the bio sludge slash bio solids decisions that were made in uh, mostly in the 1990s, your book Science for Sale opened my eyes to this issue. And in that book, which I strongly recommend, you really laid out the case for revisiting uh, the perhaps twisted science on this issue. Does that is that uh, a pretty good summary, or am I leaving something major out there, Dr. Lewis? No, you got it right. Uh, I would explain that my quote-unquote whistleblowing is nothing other than publishing scientific articles in Nature, Lancet, and Nature Medicine that raise concerns about EPA and CDC policies. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You're just publishing science, and yet that's what we've come to in this world today. We're publishing fact-based, evidence-based science turns you into a whistleblower because in some cases the, the corruption of the regulatory system is so extreme that someone needs to shed light on it with legitimate science. So, so let's, let's back up. Uh, 
Let me ask you a very basic question. I know we've covered this before, but you're featured in my upcoming film, by the way, Biosludged. Uh, people can see that trailer at biosludged.com. Uh, you visited my laboratory, and we, we uh, filmed you for that, that film, which is coming out later this year. But for those who are new to this topic, explain from a scientist's point of view, what is biosludge exactly? I mean, and why, why would the EPA say that this is okay to spread on farms and crop fields all across America? Well, the biosludge is the semi-solid material that settles out at wastewater treatment plants where our sewage goes to in municipalities across the country. Uh, it's mostly human feces, but it's got a lot of other waste in there, including industrial waste. Uh, the best way to look at what EPA has done, uh, the crux of it is, in the 1970s, 70 in particular, when EPA was created, uh, industry and municipalities ran their the chemicals into rivers through a pipe. EPA, under the first Clinton administration, uh, that after Jimmy Carter, under Jimmy Carter's presidency, uh, sewage treatment plants were created, created across America to where the pollutants that were in the water became concentrated in the solid material, the biosludge that settles out at waste treatment plants. And the difference here in be between having infinitesimally small concentrations of pollutants going into the rivers and diluting out in the oceans, getting carried away from the human population and settling out in the sediments at the bottoms of the oceans, is it's now concentrated millions of times higher and spread on land all around us and unregulated. Now, your, your, your audio is a little bit choppy. Uh, we got most of that. I would just uh, caution uh, our viewers or urge our viewers, listen in, because this interview is extremely important to understand. And if I could just restate what you said, Dr. Lewis, uh, before, previously, b before the EPA legalized this, the contaminants and pollutants were at much lower concentrations as they were being released into, let's say, waterways or, or various oceans. But today, they're, they're more highly concentrated into biosolids, and the EPA has granted permission for that biosludge, as we call it, to be distributed, uh, basically trucked out of the cities and distributed in rural areas across America, distributed onto farmlands, croplands, orchards, uh, sometimes school playgrounds, uh, a forest where children hike, and all of these places. And now that the pollutants are, are concentrated, and as you said, it's, it's heavy metals. It's industrial waste from cities, it's human feces, it's E. coli, it's viral strains, bacterial strains, in addition to all the plasticizer chemicals, hormone disruptors, pharmaceuticals, recreational drugs, and anything else that we can think of. Does that, does that kind of summarize, is that a pretty accurate description? Exactly, and uh, as a microbiologist, I sort of stress that every antibiotic resistant organism we know of is contained in it and many of them survive the sewage treatment process oh yeah so okay so we're living in a society that i believe even some medical journals have said is the end of the era of antibiotics because of the spread of superbugs and what you're saying is then some of these superbugs let's say uh, someone uses the toilet in a hospital setting uh, MRSA or C. diff or other antibiotic resistant strains can be flushed into the municipal sewer system, end up in this biosludge and end up being spread on food farms or countryside areas, superbugs. It almost sounds like a weapon delivery system, Dr. Lewis. It's, 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 like, it's almost like right. biological terrorism. You could not design a more perfect weapon. I mean, think about it. We mix the infectious waste of the human population in with the pharmaceutical waste. Every antibiotic that is used goes in the sewer, so you mix the pathogens and the antibiotics together in high concentrations together and spread it all around us. And then listen to the CDC and EPA, FDA and others explain that it's the doctor's fault for over 
prescribing antibiotics. That's why we have this problem. It, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous, and it's extraordinary that it has come to this. I, I, I really encourage viewers to get your book, Science for Sale. It is astonishing, eye-opening. Uh, I think the first chapter is all about dentistry and some of the, the spread of HIV through earlier uh, dental instruments, correct? And then and then you get into biosludge in chapters two and three? Correct. All right. Well, look, we got to uh, take a quick break, Dr. Lewis. We'll be right back after this break to ask you more about why this has been legalized and why it's being covered up by the EPA, what we can do to resolve this mass pollution issue affecting America. Stay with us here on CounterThink. Think. I'm Mike Adams, your host. Each episode airs not only on Infowars.com Sundays at 6 p.m. Central, but also at the website CounterThink.com. So be sure to check out all those episodes, plus additional video blog posts as well. And we are continuing our conversation with Dr. David Lewis, former EPA scientist, a microbiologist, author of Science for Sale, one of the most intelligent and intriguing scientists I've ever had the pleasure of interviewing on these topics. And uh, Dr. Lewis, my question for you to lead off this segment is, you know, your book opened my eyes to this idea that we have a Clean Water Act and we have a Clean Air Act in the United States, but we don't have a Clean Soils Act. And so the EPA has decided to take all these contaminants and pollutants and legalize their dumping into soils, uh, many of which end up dumping into the streams and rivers anyway, and other soils are used to grow the food that we're feeding our children in public school lunch programs. So it seems kind of insane. Why Why does the EPA believe it's okay to pollute soils but not air and water? It seems inconsistent to me as a scientist. What's up with that? Well, EPA's ranking file scientists never believed that it was okay. Uh, throughout EPA's Office of Research and Development, where I worked, as a senior level research microbiologist, uh, they unanimously kicked out this idea. It was the politically run program offices in Washington under the first Clinton administration that pushed this through and actually created uh, large bodies of scientific literature that can only be described, in my opinion, as totally phony to support this. So what you seem to be referring to what the rest of us would call fake science. Are you, are you accusing the EPA in that era of conducting a, a fake science agendas to, to sort of sweep this under the rug and allow America to be polluted with biosludge? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, as we watch the Flint River in Washington, D.C., lead in the water, drinking water problem unfold, uh, we found there that EPA was publishing fake data in the scientific literature. When I got to looking at land application of toxic chemicals and heavy metals on soil, uh, we found the same thing. In fact, EPA admitted uh, when we caught them that uh, they had faked 20 years of uh, pollutant data uh, to cover up problems with land application of sewage sludge. A federal judge ruled that when the computer scientists who created the data admitted it. And you, you talked in your book about this effort within the EPA to cover up the scientific evidence showing risk of harm and the, the degree of pollution being carried out in the name of bio sludge. Uh, it seems like you were describing a... Almost what, what you might call, you know how you have the deep state in politics, it's almost like you have a deep state EPA system or uh, people within the EPA that are trying to purge real scientists uh, to get them out of the agency. Like I think you, you know, your research was halted uh, when you started speaking out. What, so I guess my question is, was there a concerted effort inside the EPA to silence those who were trying to raise the alarm over this? Uh, they, there has been, um, ever since uh, President Eisenhower left office in his farewell speech, he predicted this problem. It just naturally comes with massive federal funding of scientific research by federal agencies. Just naturally, they're going to channel all of that effort and funding 
into supporting whatever political parties they come up, policies they come up with. So that's where we are today. We have whole bodies of scientific literature that has been fabricated. And the, the difference between a university professor and a federal scientist being caught faking data is that the university professor will lose his or her job and with the EPA or the FDA or the CDC doing exactly the same thing, caught red-handed, uh, those individuals typically get promoted if it was done to support government policies. Yeah, th that is extraordinary. I mean, you're describing a systemic scientific fraud agenda inside the EPA. And as you mentioned, it's probably not limited to just the EPA. The FDA has been known for, for being engaged in a lot of fraud when it comes to covering up uh, the harm of certain pharmaceuticals, for example, that were left on the market while they were killing people in order to protect those profits. Uh, the CDC has been under fire for similar things. The EPA today, though, is, is run by Scott Pruitt. And Scott Pruitt, not long ago, came out with an, a new initiative to try to bring transparency to the EPA to say that key regulatory decisions by the EPA should be based on science that is made transparent so that public members of the public and, and also public scientists can weigh in or at least see the basis upon which these decisions have been made. Do you support Scott Pruitt's effort uh, within the EPA to bring more scientific transparency to the regulatory agency? Absolutely. I mean, Scott Pruitt, uh one of the first things he did was ask the inspector general uh, 